Hello, everybody. Rise on, King Jesus. No man cannot hinder me. Hello, everybody. Hello. Today, I'm going to have an awesome lesson. Today, we're going to be talking about Sneaky Enemy 144, Psalms 144, Elijah and Surya. We're going to talk about the Sneaky Enemy. And I'm going to use some birds that are sneaky, just like the devil. So you all, please stay with me. I'm going to play a little bit of good music for y'all to get you all in the mood for the lesson. And this is going to be a powerful lesson today because we are fed up with the enemy. I know I am. I know I'm fed up with the enemy trying to devour my family, trying to devour your mind. And I'm quite sure you all as well. So today, a lot of people should join this video because this is going to be powerful, everybody. Getting hard on the enemy. Okay. Jesus said he teaches our hands to war. So this is war. All right. The devil is already defeated. No. Trust and believe that when God is on your side, the devil is already defeated. Okay. So he can harass you, but he cannot bring you down. All right. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Yeshua HaMashiach. We welcome you in the place, the fire, the corn, the oil, the anointing, the Holy Ghost fire. You are the risen king and no man cannot hinder us, O oh God. Father God, let the blood of the Lamb be on our doorposts. Each and every listener, those who hear and those who aren't listening, Lord. Lord Jesus, guide our hearts to all understanding, humble us, and lead us not to, to, excuse me, to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Lord, we reverence you and we praise you forevermore. Lord Jesus, give us wisdom, knowledge, and revelation to open up our hearts. Remove the stony hearts and give us heart of flesh in Jesus' mighty name. To conquer and defeat the devil with sober minds. In Jesus' name we pray. This video was covered in the blood, everybody. I want you all to listen to this for a second. No man cannot hinder us. Just know that. Okay? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen.
seeking Jesus. No man can I hinder me. 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 Yes, 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 yes. This is awesome, everybody. Ride on King Jesus. That's a teen talent local group ensemble. God just gave that to me to play. Everybody, yes, God is able. He's worthy to be praised. No man cannot hinder us. No man cannot hinder me. Yes, no man cannot hinder me. No man cannot hinder me, everybody. I'm on fire now after hearing that. I am really on fire. I woke up and I said, I'm so tired of this devil. This devil want to harass. He want to seek. He want to devour. But guess what God say? I'm going to take you to Psalms 144 first. Because we need to hear this right now. And I'm up this morning. It's 9.36. I got up a little early today. Psalms 144. Blessed be the Lord. My strength, which teacheth my hands to war. He teaches our hands to war. You all don't ever forget that. My goodness and my fortress, my high tower and my deliverer, my shield and he whom I trust, who subdueth my people under me. That means he take refuge. Lord, what is man that thou takest knowledge of him? Or son of man that thou makest account of him. Man is like to vanity. His days are as a shadow that passeth away. Bow thy heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch their mountains and they shall smoke. Cast forth lightning and scatter them. Shoot out thine arrows and destroy them. Send thy hand from above. Rid me and deliver me out of great waters. From the hand of strange children, you rescue the foreigners whose mouth speak of vanity and their right hand is at a right hand of falsehood. They're empty words. Their words are empty. I will sing a new song unto thee, O, o God. Upon a psaltery and an instrument of ten strings will I sing praises unto, three, unto thee. It is he that giveth salvation unto kings who delivereth David. His servant from the hurtful sword. Rid me and deliver me from the hand of strange children. Whose mouth speak of vanity. And their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. You rescue the foreigners. That our sons may be as plants grown up in their youth. That our daughters may be as cornerstones polished after the similitude of a palace. That our garners may be full of fort and all manner of store. That our sheep may bring forth thousands and ten thousands in our streets, the barns and the produce. That our oxen may be strong to labor. That there be no breaking in nor going out. That there be no complaining in our streets. Happy is that people that is in such a case. Yea, happy is that people whose God is the Lord. Happy is the people whose God is the Lord. We are God's people. We are God's children. I want to bring to you for a moment, everyone, I want to bring to you a little bit on the 144 for a second. I have a lot 
that I kind of want to cover. Because I'm trying to make a point here today. The enemy is defeated. And after we, I'm finished with this, you all will believe that the enemy is truly defeated. He is defeated because the Lord takes on. The enemy is defeated because the Lord says so, everyone. Just a second, you all. I need to find this content for one moment. Stay with me, you all. Don't go nowhere. You all, thank you all for waiting for me, being patient. Okay. Now, um, off of versebyverse.org. This is a very good site to break down the verses. Okay, we're talking about 144 right now. I just read you Psalms 144 because God said he teaches our hands to war against the evil of the world, the darkness of the world. Okay, so we know that this is a place of good versus evil. All right, but God give us the tools to fight that war against our enemies. Okay, now Revelations, okay, you can explain what importance of 144. The 144 Jewish virgins and saints, 144 cubits as the left of the New Jerusalem. The meaning of the number 12 in scripture is God's perfect rule through human agency or government. We see that meaning reflected in 12 apostles, 12 tribes of Israel. Further, in Hebrew, to double a number implies added emphasis 12 times 2 equals 24. And to multiply a number indicates the highest emphasis, i.e. 12 times 12 equals 144. We see this rule at work in places like Matthew 18. Matthew 18, 21. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times. Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. Peter suggested that forgiving 70 times would be enough. Seven is the number of completeness. But Jesus answered that God's expectation is that we would forgive our brother 70 times seven, which was a multiplication indicating the highest emphasis, limitless and forgiveness. So when we see 144, we know this is a multiple of 12 indicating the highest emphasis on God ruling through human agency. The 144 virgin men are chosen specifically by God and called by God as his agents of salvation. Likewise, the measurement of the New Jerusalem placed the highest emphasis on God, ruling through and over his people in the New Jerusalem. The symbolism communicates that the population of the New Jerusalem owe their existence to God's perfect plan manifested through the work of men like the apostles and the sons of Jacob everyone. Okay, I'm going to go now into something that is very, very interesting, everyone. I am talking right now about featuredcreature.com. Okay, now I'm going to talk about some sneaky creatures. These are birds. Just like this devil is so sneaky. He want to seek and devour. He want to devour your life. He want to devour your mind. He want to devour your children. He want to devour your family. He want to devour your body. But Jesus say, put on a helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit to gird your loins with the belt of truth, to shield your feet with the preparation of gospel of peace. Okay, I'm going to talk about a black heron. A black heron is a bird that makes daytime night, everybody. Okay, these African water birds have a unique and, and, and a dastardly predation tactic called canopy feeding. They hunch over and form their wings into a circular makeshift umbrella over the water. This blocks out the sunlight. Hallelujah. 
and creates a small area of darkness underneath. It, in addition it, to helping the bird see what's going on in the murk, surrounding fish are, are lulled into a false sense of security. Does that sound does that sound familiar? The devil tries to give us the kingdoms of this world, which is a false sense of security. That's what he offers. By making them think that they either night has fallen or the shady area is a safe refuge. So it's a trick. It's neither when a gullible fish then proceeds to poke its head out from its hiding place to investigate. It's curtains by way of a brutal beak stab. Definitely one of the sneakiest animals ever. Okay. A number of animals like the uh, opossum play dead to discourage predators. On the other hand, use the gambit for offense. Hence their other common name, the sleeper. When it's time to hunt, all the fish has to do is flop over like a corpse and settle to the bottom. Maybe gurgling a little and holding a tiny flower in its fins to add to the effect. Then when a fish comes to pick at the supposed carcass, the, cy the, the cyclid perks back up again and gobbles up the scavenger. The topi antelope are a common species of ungulate from Africa with a complex social structure. Complex enough to wear their males. Much like the human variety are prone to telling outrageous lies in order to improve their chances, you know, at intercourse. In order to keep females nearby during their very short estrus, a recent study has observed male topi sounding off fake alarm calls. So basically, whenever female topis looks like they might start to wander away, males yell the equivalent of, the OMG lion for the sole purpose of keeping their, their intercourse partners from running into the arms of some other antelope who may or may not have a nicer car. <laughs> okay. Then you got the thieving, sea, the, 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 the thieving uh, seagulls. They rank amateurs compared to another type of seabird called a skuas. These airborne um, creatures are the masters of avian piracy. Another more descriptive common name for them is parasitic jaggers. Completely devoid of honor, skuas think nothing of stealing the chicks and eggs of other birds. But that's just the start. Most of their diet is derived from midair robbery. Their favorite tactic sometimes performed in teens is to fly around and harass fellow seabirds. Amen. Hallelujah. To the point that they vomit up their catch. The technical term for this type of behavior is kleptoparasitism. In case you were looking for the perfect word to describe certain members of your own family. <laughs> These are birds that are sneaky. This is how they sneak upon their prey. Just like the devil, he want to give you the false sense of security. He'll tell you to take this or do this today or show you something that does not of God. He'll want you to be on drugs. He wants you to be in sexual immoral things. He wants you to just devour your family, your marriages, your relationships, your homes, your households. He want to put discourse amongst you. Okay? So we have to get tough on this devil. We must gird our loins, put on a helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, be prayed up. Read our word each and every day, everybody. These are the things that we must do. These are the things that we must do, everyone. These are the things that we must do. So we want to seek God and we want to seek his face continually. Jesus. 
just like Proverbs 24, 17, we are told not to gloat. But we are to feed our enemies, though. Okay? We can fight the enemy. But Jesus said he will make our enemies bless us. So that's what we want to understand. In Deuteronomy 28, 7, 9, the Lord said he will use your enemies to be defeated before your face. See, Jesus will use our enemies to be defeated before our face, you all. He will use our enemies to be defeated before our face. When you start really receiving your blessings and people turn around and say, Dang, the day she was unemployed, now she's doing so well. What happened? That's the Lord's blessing. He said, I'll make the enemy your footstool. Just like in the story of Elisha in 2 Kings, everyone, when Elisha was fighting against the Assyrian army, Let's read about this for a second. Now the book, this is what 2 Kings is about. The book of 2 Kings continues the drama began in 1 Kings, the tragic history of two nations on a collision course with captivity. The author systematically traces the reigning monarchs of Israel and Judah, first by carrying one nation's history forward, then retracing the same period for the other nation. 19 consecutive evil kings rule in Israel, leading to the captivity by Assyria. The picture is somewhat brighter in Judah, where godly kings occasionally emerge to reform the evils of their predecessors. In the end, however, sin outweighs righteousness and Judah is marched off to Zion. Now, let me read a little bit of this. Then Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab. And as Ahiah fell down through a lattice in his upper chamber that was in Samaria and was sick. And he sent messengers and said unto them, Go inquire of Beelzebub. Beelzebub is, is a pagan god, the god of Akron, whether I shall recover of this disease. But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah, Tishbite, Arise, go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria. And say unto them, Then the angel went to Elijah, the Tishbite. He told him to go up to the king of Samaria and say to them, Is it not because there is not a God in Israel that you go to inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Ekron? See, back then, people were left to know gods. I mean, I'm sorry. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. People were left to know kings. Okay, so people were serving all kind of gods, Beelzebub. And now, therefore, thus saith the Lord, thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou gone up, but shall surely die. And the Elijah departed, departed. And when the messengers turned back unto him, he said unto them, Why are ye now turned back? Came back. Okay. And they said unto him, There came a man up to meet us and said to us, Go turn unto the king that sent you, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Is it not because there is not a God in Israel that thou sendest to inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Akron? Powerful. Therefore thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but shalt surely die. And he said unto them, What manner of man was he? What manner of man was he? Which came up to meet you and told you these words. What kind of man, he said. And they answered him, He was an hairy man and girt with a girdle of leather about his loins. And he said, It is Elijah, the Tishbite. Then the king sent unto him a captain of fifty with his fifty. 
And he went up to him, and behold, he sat on the top of a hill, and he spake unto him, Thou man of God. The king have said, Come down. And Elijah answered and said to the captain of fifty, If I be a man of God, then let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy fifty. And there came down from fire from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. <laughs> it's, true, it's truly God. Again, uh, again also he sent unto him another captain of fifty with his fifty. 50 and 50. And he answered and said unto him, O man of God, thus hath the king said, Come down quickly. And Elijah answered and said unto them, If I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy fifty. And the fire of God came down from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. Mm. And he sent again a captain of the third fifty with his fifty. And the third captain of fifty went up and came and fell on his knees before Elijah and besought him and said unto him, O man of God, I pray thee, let my life and the life of these fifty thy servants be precious in thy sight. Behold, there came fire down from heaven and burned up the two captains of the former fifties with their fifties. O oh, fire, therefore let my life now be precious in thy sight. And the angel of the Lord said unto Elijah, Go down with him, be not afraid of him. And he arose and went down with him unto the king. And he said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, For as much as thou hast sent messages to inquire Beelzebub, the god of Akron, is it not because there is no god in Israel to inquire of his word? Therefore thou shalt not come down, off that bed on which thou art gone up, but shall surely die. So he died according to the word of the Lord, which Elijah had spoken. And Jehoram reigned his head stead in the second year of Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, because he had no son. Now the rest of the acts of Ezekiah, which he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel? And it came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Bethel. And Elijah said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. And the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elijah and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yea, I know it. Hold your peace. And Elijah said unto him, Elijah, tarry here. I pray thee, for the Lord hath sent me to Jericho. And he said, As the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. And the sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elisha and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he, said, and he answered, Yea, I know it. Hold your peace. Yea, hold your peace. He said, Keep silent. And Elijah said unto him, Tarry, I pray thee here, for the Lord hath sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And they too went on. So Elijah kept telling Elisha that he will not leave him. Okay, get that? And after, and 50 men of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view afar off. And they too stood by Jordan. They was facing them at a distance. And Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters. And they were divided hither and hither. Hither and thither. So that they too went over on dry ground. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee, but I be taken away from thee. And Elijah said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. So Elisha was praying to God that God will send a double portion of his anointing 
that he had on Elijah to him. And he said, thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass as they still went on and talked that behold, they appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Okay, so Elijah went up into a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it. And he cried, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel, and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them into pieces. So Elijah, like we die of, of like death when we have a burial and a friend of Elijah. We're not with a chariot of fire okay, and horses. He took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell upon from him and went back and stood by the bank of the Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters. And said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elijah went over. And when the sons of the prophets, which were to view at Jericho, saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah doth rust on Elisha. So he said that the spirit of, the, of God that was on Elijah rust on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. And they said unto him, Behold now, there be with thy servants fifty strong men. Let them go, we pray thee, and seek thy master. Lest peradventure the spirit of the Lord have taken him up and cast him upon some mountain or into some valley. And he said, ye shall not send. And when the, they urged him till he was ashamed, he said, send thy, they sent therefore 50 men. And they saw three days, but found him not. Okay. And when they came again to him, for he turned at Jericho, he said unto them, did I not say unto you? Go not. And the men of the city said unto Elisha, Behold, I pray thee, the situation of the city is pleasant, as my Lord saith, but the water is not, and the ground is barren, it's bad. Okay. And he said, Bring me a new cruise and put salt therein. And they brought it to him. And he went forth unto the spring of the waters and cast the salt in the air, and said, Thus saith the Lord, I have healed these waters. There shall not be from thence any more death or barren land. So the waters are healed unto this day, according to the saying of Elijah, which he spake. And he went up from thence unto Bethel. And as he was going up by the way, there came forth little children out of the city. And they mocked him and said unto him, Go up, thou ball here, go up, thou ball here, these little youths. And he turned back and looked on them and cursed them in the name of the Lord. And there came forth two she bears out of the wood and tear forty and two children of them. And he went from thence to Mount Carmel, and from thence he turned to Samaria. Now Jerome, the son of Ahab, began to reign over Israel and Samaria, the eighteenth year of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, and reigned twelve years. And he wrought evil in the sight of the Lord. But like his father and like his mother, for he put away the image of Baal that his father had made. Nevertheless, he cleaved unto the sins of Jero Jeroboam, the son of Nabat, which made Israel to sin. He departed not therefrom. So this, this, this caused Israel to sin. He sins them for serving the God of Baal. And Misha king of Moab was a sheep master and rendered unto the king of Israel a hundred thousand lambs and a hundred thousand rams with the wool. But it came to pass when Ahab was dead that the king of Moab rebelled against the king of Israel. And King Jehoram went out of Samaria the same time and numbered all Israel. They were mustered. And he went and sent to Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, saying, The king of Moab have rebelled against me. Wilt thou go? with me against Moab to battle? And he said, I will go up. I am as thou art my people, as thy people, and my horses as thy horses. And he said, which way shall we go up? And he answered, the way through the wilderness of Edom. 
So the king of Israel went and the king of Judah and the king Edom of Edom and they fetched a compass of seven days journey. And there was no water for the host and for the cattle that followed them. And the king of Israel said, Alas, that the Lord hath called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord that we may inquire the Lord by him? And one of the kings of Israel's servants answered and said, Here is Elisha, the son of Shaphat, which poured water on the hands of Elijah. And Jehoshaphat said, The word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. And Elijah said unto the king of Israel, What have I to do with thee? Get thee to the prophets of thy father and to the prophets of thy mother. And the kings of Israel said unto him, Nay, for the Lord have called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. Of Moab. And Elijah said, As the Lord of hosts liveth, before whom I stand, surely were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I would not look toward thee nor see thee. But now bring me a minstrel, and it came to pass. When the minstrel prayed, the hand of the Lord came upon him. And he said, Thus saith the Lord, Make this valley full of ditches, the water canals. For thus saith the Lord, Ye shall not see wind, neither shall ye see rain, Yet that valley shall be filled with water, that ye may drink both ye and your cattle and your beasts. And this is but a light thing in the sight of the Lord. He will deliver the Moabites also into your hand. And ye shall smite every fenced city and every choice city and shall fell every good, fell every good tree and stop all wells of water. And mar every good piece of land with stones, the ruin. And it came to pass in the morning. When the meat offering was offered, that behold, there came water by the way of Edom. The country was filled with water. And when all Moab heard the kings were up to fight against them, they gathered all they were able to put on armor and upward and stood in the border. And those rose up early in the morning and the sun shone upon the water. And the Moabites saw the water on the other side as red as blood. And they said, this is blood. The kings are surely slain and they have smitten one another. Now, therefore, Moab to the spoil. And when they came to the camp of Israel, the Israelites rose up and smote the Moabites so that they fled before them. But they went forward, smiting the Moabites, even in their country. And they beat down the cities and on every good piece of land, cast every man his stone and filled it. And they stopped all the wells of water and fell. All the good trees, only in Kashash, Kashash, left they the stones thereof, howbeit the slingers went about it and smote it. They surrounded it. And when the kings of Moab saw that the battle was too sore for him, he took with him 700 men that drew swords to break through even unto the king of Edom, but they could not. Then he took his eldest son that should have reigned in his steed. And offer him for a burnt offering upon the wall. And there was great indignation against Israel. And they departed from him and returned to their own land. Now there cried a certain woman of wives of the sons of prophets of Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditor is come to take unto him by my two sons to the bondman. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, the handmaid had not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Then he said, go borrow these vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. And when thou art coming, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shall pour out into all those vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from then and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought the vessels to her, and she poured it out. And it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more, and the oil stayed, it ceased. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go sell thou and thy children of the rest. And it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shushanum, 
where was a great woman, and she constrained him to, to eat bread. And so it was that as oft as he passed by, he turned in thither to eat bread. And she said unto her husband, Behold now, I perceive that this is a holy man of God, which passes by us continually. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set for him there a bed and a table and a stool and a candlestick, and it shall be. When he cometh to us, that he shall turn the hither, thither. And it fell on a day that he came thither, and he turned into the chamber and lay there. And he said to Gehazi, his servant, Call this Shush, uh, Shunammite. And when he called her, she stood before him. And he said unto him, Say now unto her, Behold, thou hast been careful for us with all these cares. What is to be done for thee? Wouldest thou be spoken for the king or to the captain of the host? And she answered, I dwell among my own people. Concern. And he said, What then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, Verily she have no child, and her husband is old. And he said, Call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door. And he said, About this, Son, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. And she said, Nay, my lord, thou man God, do not lie unto thy handmaid about this time next year, okay? And the woman conceived and bare a son at that season that Elijah had said unto her according to the time of life. And when the child was grown and fell on a day that he went out to his father, to the reapers, and he said unto his father, my head, my head, and he said to a, a lad, carry him unto his mother. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and then died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door upon him and went out. And she called unto her husband and said, Send me, I pray thee, one of the young men and one of the donkeys, that I may run to the man of God and come again. And he said, Wherefore wilt thou go him today? It is neither uh, new moon nor Sabbath. And she said, It shall be well. Then she saddled a donkey and said to her servant, Drive and go forward. Slack not thy riding for me, except I bid thee. So she went and came unto the man of God to Mount Carmel. And it came to pass, when the man of God saw her far off, that he said to Gehazi, his servant, Behold, yonder is that Shudamite. Run now, and I pray thee, to meet her, and say unto her, It is well with thee. It is well with thy husband. It is well with the child. And she answered, It is well. And when she came to the man of God to the hill, she caught him by the feet, by Gehazi, came near to thrust her away. The man of God said, Let her alone, for her soul is vexed within her, and the Lord hath hid her it from me and have not told me. Then she said, Did I desire a son of my Lord? Did I, did I not say, Do not deceive me? Then he said to Gehazi, Gird up thy loins and take my staff in thy hand and go thy way. If thou meet any man, salute him not, and if any salute thee, answer him not again. And lay my staff upon the face of child. And the mother of the child said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And he arose to follow, he, and followed her. And Gehazi passed on before them, and laid the staff upon the face of the child. But there was neither voice nor hearing. Wherefore he went away to meet him, and told him, saying, The child is not awake. And when Elijah was come to the house, behold, the child was dead, and laid upon his bed. He went into there and shut the door upon them twain and prayed unto the Lord. And he went up and laid upon the child and put his mouth upon his mouth and his eyes upon his eyes and his hands upon his hands. And he stretched himself upon the child and the flesh of the child waxed warm. Then he returned and walked in the house to and fro and went up and stretched himself upon him. And the child sneezed seven times and the child opened his eyes. Amen. See, Jesus blessed Elijah to bring the woman's son back to life. See, this is, see, God is an awesome God. I wanted to keep reading. See, sometimes when we're in this Bible, it's not to read a few words. Sometimes we have to keep going. When the Spirit of God leads you, you must obey. So the, the Spirit of the Lord prompted me to keep reading, okay? I was only going to read up to chapter 3, but I've ended up reading up to chapter 4 for this. The Spirit of the Lord will prompt you to do things, but 
when he prompt you, when he say when when you hear his voice, you must answer. So I was not permitted to stop in chapter three. I went further because God is trying to show us something here. God brings our dead souls back to life. Okay. The enemy is already defeated. The enemy want to devour your soul. The enemy want to devour your spirit. But God gives us the sword to slay the devil and his minions. But we must put on that full armor. See, God anointed Elisha with a double portion of the anointing he had for Elijah, who went up in the chariot of fire. fire. Okay, so God is so awesome that he restores our soul. He give us reformation. He give us newness. See, the devil is trying to devour your families. He's trying to devour your children. See, there, there, there is the devil is trying to run amok in this world right now, in this natural realm, because he knows that his time is short. So he's trying to seek and devour everybody that he can before the Lord returns. But Jesus gives us the tools to fight. The sword of the spirit. His word changes not everyone. I want you all to stand firm. See, you can't fight the devil if you're not in the word. You, you can't fight this devil if you're not praying steadfast. Being unmovable, always abounding in Christ. Facebook can't, can't, can't save you. Instagram can't save you. Pinterest can't save you. YouTube can't save you. Social media can't save you. The devil is to seek and devour. God preserve. He wants to preserve our souls. Just as in Psalms 86. Bow down thine ear, O Lord. Hear me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my soul, for I am holy. O thou, my God, save thy servant that trusteth in thee. My life, save my life. Be merciful unto me, O Lord, for I cry unto thee daily. Cry unto him daily, you all. Rejoice the soul of thy servant, for unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive, and plenteous and mercy unto all them that call upon thee. Give ear, O Lord, unto my prayer, and attend to the voice of my supplications. In the day of my trouble, I will call upon thee, for thou wilt answer me. Among the gods there is none like unto thee, O Lord, neither are there any works like unto thy works. All nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship before thee, O Lord, and shall glorify thy name. For thou art great and doest wondrous things, thou art great alone. Teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. I will praise thee, O Lord, my God, with all my heart, and I will glorify thy name forevermore. Let God teach you. Let God teach us. Unite our hearts to fear him, to fear the name of the Lord. It is in the day of trouble that we will call upon the Lord. And he will answer us. But we must call. We must put forth the effort to call on God, to be able to trust in him and believe and to have faith and to walk in righteousness and holiness and be blameless. See, we, we have sinned, but Jesus knew no sin. He became a propitiation for our sin debts. He used Elijah to heal her son. See, what the devil meant for evil, God meant it for your good. Therefore, God will give you that son back. 
your prodigal son or daughter. He will get that marriage back that you shouldn't have left. He will get that relationship back. He will give you peace in your heart and peace in your mind no matter what is going on around you. So the earth is the Lord's and the fullness therein. See, this devil, he can't do nothing without God allowing it because he's not bigger than God. But see, sometimes God uses things for the testing, to test our faith and our trials. But we have to wait on them. We have to trust in them and we have to believe on them. So I pray that you all have enjoyed this lesson and received wisdom, knowledge and revelation. And remember that no man cannot hinder me. No man cannot hinder you. With God on your side, we can't lose. The devil has already defeated everyone. Let me say a prayer before I go. Heavenly Father, Yeshua Hamashiach, may your peace, your Holy Ghost fire, your anointing and wine, a corn and oil, be on our hearts, our minds, our lives, the blood of the Lamb, be on our doorposts. God, our ears, our hearts, our footsteps, our minds, keep us holy, keep us in Centered in the plumb line with you, O oh God, this day, now and forevermore. I pray that more and more will welcome you in their hearts and their minds. The Spirit of the Lord is on us, O oh God, in Jesus' mighty name. You all, this has been fun. I hope you all have enjoyed it. May you all give me some kind of a message and tell me what parts have you enjoyed most or if you got revelation out of the word today. And remember that God used Elijah to heal the, the dying boy, the woman's dying son. So this is who he is. He performs those type of miracles. Okay. He sends angels, his holy angels to anoint us and to give us warnings and to help us. We are his vessels. He gives us that restoration of peace. He gives us that newness. But we must first put on that full armor and seek him. Continually, he says, the meek shall inherit the earth. You all be blessed. This is Lisa and have a blessed day. Bye-bye. I love you all to the moon and back.